We are kicking off with Monday Night Raw, and on the heels of his controversial men's elimination chamber victory, Drew McIntyre arrived in San Jose in a good mood. McIntyre talked about doctors checking him after the match and fearing that an injury could cost him WrestleMania, which Drew responded to by saying, Who do you think I am, CM Punk? Drew's mockery of the best in the world continued as he said that since Punk is straight edge, he drank for the both of them to celebrate the win in Perth, in More Brilliance by McIntyre. McIntyre then turned his attention to Seth Rollins, and Drew begged Rollins not to go after the bloodline, saying it's always the same when he goes against the dominant faction. Rollins contemplated the words of McIntyre before telling him that there were some things bigger than wrestling in titles, and putting an end to the bloodline is one of them. Referencing the possibility of the bloodline interfering in their match in Philly, Drew said that the bloodline could taint his victory, another show of cockiness by McIntyre. This was a great segment from both guys as McIntyre thrives as the antagonistic heel in a complete 180 from the man who once fought for honor and pride against the bloodline. The fact that McIntyre is more than open to letting others interfere in his matches shows just how much he's changed, considering the circumstances behind his defeat to Roman Reigns in Cardiff. Rollins, as the Avenger seeking to end the bigger threat to WWE, even if it cost him the world title against McIntyre, works too, though it would probably be better without the dancing and outfits. Nevertheless, Rollins is remaining true to his persona, and their WrestleMania match should be an epic one, even with the genuine risk of outside interference. Are you enjoying Drew McIntyre's heel turn? And what do you want to see next from these two as we get closer to WrestleMania? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Cody Rhodes continued his momentous run to WrestleMania 40, defeating Grayson Waller in relatively short order during this week's Raw. Rhodes won in spite of interference by Austin Theory to put Waller away with a Cody Cutter and Crossroads in a dominant win establishing momentum for the top babyface in wrestling. Theory was able to distract Rhodes by jumping on the apron, allowing Waller to connect with a right hand, but a tope suicida moments later wiped out Theory and sent him over the announce table. It's stunning to see where Theory is now based on where he was a year ago when he beat John Cena in the opening match of WrestleMania 39. Even in defeat, Waller will stay over thanks to his natural charisma and personality, though WWE would be wise to consider giving the loudmouth Aussie a significant win down the line. After the match, Paul Heyman appeared, flanked by suspended NYPD officers, and attempted to threaten Rhodes to redact his challenge to The Rock made at Elimination Chamber Perth. Cody refused and waffled all three henchmen with a steel chair before proclaiming that the bloodline is not hunting him, he is hunting the bloodline. Cody continues to refer to Roman Reigns' special counsel as Mr. Heyman, a sign of respect to the man who gave him a role in ECW when he needed one, despite the differences Cody and Heyman have. This was excellent and finally gives fans that one piece of the puzzle that had been missing, an aggressive Rhodes taking the fight to his oppressors. If WWE can keep this momentum up, then Rhodes vs. Reigns 2 may be even bigger than their first encounter. But what did you think of this match and segment? Let us know in the comments. The intense rivalry between the New Day's Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston and Imperium's Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci wrote its latest chapter on Raw in a brutal, violent street fight. The match was appropriately punishing, with intensity from the babyfaces that was off the charts matched only by the cerebral awareness of the European heels. Woods and Kingston got that old-school babyface pop right away by rocking San Jose Sharks jerseys in the home of the NHL squad, an old but effective move by the New Day. Kaiser teased drop-kicking Woods' head into the ring steps, but Kingston cut him off, a callback to the heel's brutal assault on Kofi a few months back. Woods delivered an elbow drop on Da Vinci and threw a table, while Kingston dove through the ropes for a tope suicida at Kaiser, holding a kendo stick that caught the German in the face. It certainly looked as though Kingston and Woods would avenge months of torment by Kaiser and Vinci and secure the victory, but that wasn't meant to be on this night. An alert Vinci shoved Kingston off the top rope and threw a table before Kaiser sent Woods into a steel chair for the win, ending a great match that would have been at home on a premium live event. The heels look even more potent and dangerous because they weathered the emotional barrage of their opponents, only to capitalize on the slightest opening in arguably the match of the night. We've got some sad news to report now as wrestling icon Ole Anderson has passed away at the age of 81. One of the founding members of the Four Horsemen, Ole worked alongside Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, and manager J.J. Dillon for years and had an illustrious career spanning decades. 
While not in the ring, he served as booker for Georgia Championship Wrestling and Jim Crockett Promotions, the latter of which would become WCW. News of his passing was shared by fellow wrestling legend Ricky Morton, who said Ole taught him so much in wrestling and said he'll miss his friend who was tough as nails. On Twitter, Ric Flair shared a statement on his late friend, saying he was forever thankful to Ole for helping to bring him into Crockett Promotions. Flair added that Ole helped him start in wrestling, and he wouldn't be the star he is today without him, and we'd like to offer our condolences to those who knew Anderson at this incredibly sad time. TNA news as the company has certainly had a unique 2024 thus far, from the well-received relaunch at Hard to Kill to the controversial firing of Scott Demore by Anthem. Nevertheless, TNA still needs to produce regular weekly content as well as pay-per-views, and now one of wrestling's hottest free agents may be ready to make an impact. PW Insider reports that Alex Hammerstone has been participating in ongoing talks with TNA, and the rumor is that things are getting pretty serious between the two sides. Hammerstone, a former MLW World Champion, made his TNA debut at Hard to Kill with a loss to Josh Alexander in a meeting of two of the beefiest stars competing in wrestling today. Hammerstone has made his presence felt in many places, and Booker T has said he wants him to get a chance in WWE, but expect to see him back on TNA programming sooner rather than later. Now in 2016, the WWE retired the Divas Championship as part of its women's revolution in a move that also saw the company retire the term Divas when describing female talent. In the years since, we've seen multiple women's championships be introduced to the company, but now one superstar is ready to bring back the Divas title. In a tweet shortly before Raw went live, Chelsea Green said that she wanted to discuss the Anaheim screw job of the previous week, which saw her eliminated from a battle royal. Green may be playing fast and loose with what constitutes a screw job, but she also said that she plans on going to WrestleMania and becoming the next WWE Divas Champion. Green has been vocal about her love for the Divas era of WWE, which is when she really began watching wrestling and told the Insight Podcast that she would have thrived in WWE at that time. At this time, there's no confirmed plans for the return of the Divas title, but should Green hold gold in WWE, the fabulous superstar may give that gold a familiar makeover. But what do you think of this? Should the WWE Divas Championship be brought back by Chelsea Green? Let us know in the comments. Green appeared on this week's Raw against the woman who eliminated her in the so-called Anaheim screw job, that being Raquel Rodriguez. Unfortunately for the Canadian, Rodriguez handily got the win in another impressive showing, though it means little when Creative doesn't seem to know what to do with her. Green hasn't won a match on Raw since October of last year, but seems in a much better position, a testament to how the sassy superstar has been able to get over with fans. More from Raw now as Sami Zayn wouldn't let a suspected rib injury slow him down, and in a hard-fought match, was able to defeat Shinsuke Nakamura. This was a step in the right direction for Zayn, who may very well find himself in a match of significance come WrestleMania. In a backstage segment later in the show, Zayn reiterated his commitment to become champion at WrestleMania 40 and was interrupted by Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci. Intercontinental champion Gunther soon interrupted, teasing a showdown between himself and Zayn that could easily be a show stealer on either night of WrestleMania. In the ring, Gunther was flanked by Kaiser and Vinci and addressed his future before breaking the unwritten rule of pro wrestling by saying there was no one left to challenge him. Gunther, in an uncharacteristic move, bragged, nobody is perfect, but I am very, very close, and spoke with disgust about fans wanting to see our truth face him at WrestleMania. It wasn't Truth who interrupted Gunther, but rather the more legitimate members of the Judgment Day, and Dominic Mysterio was the one to step up to the dominant Austrian. A heated Damian Priest was ultimately held back by his teammates, while Gunther stood tall, raising the Intercontinental title overhead as if to taunt his newfound rivals. This was unexpected to say the least, but the idea of Mysterio catching a beatdown at the hands of the Ring General at WrestleMania has to be appealing to fans. If not him, then Sami Zayn would make an excellent choice in April, but who do you want to see step into the ring with Gunther at WrestleMania 40? Speaking of the Judgment Day, Rhea Ripley arrived on Raw to an ovation just days after retaining the Women's World Championship in her native Australia, but was quickly confronted by Becky Lynch. After a verbal back and forth, Nia Jax interrupted proceedings to attack Lynch from behind, a message that she is not abandoning her goal to become champion. This was a perfectly acceptable opening segment that highlighted one of the top matches on WrestleMania and gave a shine to two of the biggest winners from the Elimination Chamber event. 
Furthermore, it also heated Jax up, ensuring fans that her loss to Ripley was not a one and done, and it'll be interesting to see what role she plays from here. And that was this week's Raw, and what did you make of the show? Let us know in the comments down below. One name fans didn't see at this week's Raw was R-Truth, but the easily confused and hilarious superstar did try his best to make it to the show. In a video shared shortly before the show, Truth was seen psyching himself up for Raw in San Francisco, unaware that the show was close to an hour's drive away in San Jose. At least this isn't as bad as Truth's travel woes for Elimination Chamber Perth, as he traveled to Austria instead of Australia, about 8,230 miles away from where the show was happening. Given he was on the wrong continent last time, Truth being in San Francisco instead of San Jose is a massive step in the right direction, and maybe next time he'll make it to Raw. Now it's been over three weeks since fans last saw Piper Niven in the ring on Raw, with her most recent match being on the January 29th show where she suffered a tag team match defeat. In an update from Fightful Select, it's been revealed that Niven's absence isn't a case of not being used, but that she's been out with a hand injury. There have been concerns about the severity of the damage, with fears of a potential fracture, which could put any plans for Niven to compete at WrestleMania on hold. It had been speculated last week that Niven was hurt when she missed the Elimination Chamber Qualifier Battle Royal, and we'll have to follow her situation for further updates. Over to AEW now as the company recently brought in Jennifer Pepperman, who until this month had been with WWE, and now the company has another notable name on board. Fightful Select is reporting that Arcade Aura has joined the company as a backstage interviewer, picking up some of the load that has been carried by Renee Paquette and Lexi Nair. Fightful also reported that there were others discussed in regards to joining the backstage interview team, and that there could be more additions to come, though nothing has been confirmed just yet. AEW is certainly bolstering its ranks, as in addition to Aura and Peppermint, the company recently brought back QT Marshall as a producer and coach, though it said he won't be wrestling. 2024 is shaping up to be a big year for AEW, and time will tell who else the company signs as they look to continue its growth under Tony Khan. One name AEW would likely want to have on its roster is Julia, though for the last several months it has seemed inevitable that she would be joining WWE after her stardom contract expires. The firing of Rossi Agawa has only galvanized the belief that Julia would be leaving, and now she is less than a month before her contract with stardom is through. Tokyo Sports confirms that Julia will be departing Stardom when her contract expires next month, and she has informed Stardom and parent company Bushiroad of her desire to leave. Rather than WWE, though, it's now expected that Julia will be joining Agawa's new promotion, which the former Stardom head confirmed is in the works following his firing. Many on Stardom's roster are immensely loyal to Agawa, and the belief is that Julia wants to help get the company off the ground before she later joins WWE. As for when Julia is expected to join WWE, that remains to be seen, but fans wanting her on Raw or SmackDown will have to wait until after she makes her presence felt in Agawa's new company. It's hard to think of more controversial figures in pro wrestling than Vince McMahon, and the lawsuit filed by Janelle Grant has opened up a lot of talk about the company's handling of women. It's also been speculated that if the allegations are true, who in WWE knew about the abuse and trafficking of Grant, and now some former WWE stars are speaking up. During a recent episode of Café de René, René Dupree played a clip from Ryback's show where Ryback alleged that something happened between Triple H and Caitlyn. Ryback also claimed that there was a Cena and Alex Riley story out there, but provided no actual proof behind these latest claims against WWE. Dupree would then offer his thoughts on the situation, claiming he heard a story of Stephanie McMahon being involved with a wrestler who wasn't her husband. Dupree added that Triple H helped out the wrestler's ex-wife as they were getting divorced at the time, and the game allegedly paid for the legal costs. Similar to Ryback, Dupree did not give any concrete evidence behind these claims, nor did he name the wrestler that Stephanie McMahon allegedly cheated on Triple H with. These claims are certainly shocking, though many have been skeptical given Ryback's history of making shocking claims against WWE and then not providing any proof. Whether these claims are true or not, WWE is under great scrutiny right now, as even with Vince McMahon gone, the allegations against him aren't going away anytime soon. At Elimination Chamber Perth, Rhea Ripley retained her Women's World title in the show's main event in an emotional homecoming for the Judgment Day's mommy. In addition to her current title reign, Ripley is a former Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and NXT UK Women's Champion, as well as a Tag Team Champion, and also has a Royal Rumble win to her name. 
Now Ripley could be closing in on another accolade as the advertiser reports that Rhea has been shortlisted on the list of the South Australian Woman of the Year Award. At just 27 years old, Ripley has done big things and has a bright future ahead of her, and she may be the Woman of the Year when it comes to South Australia. Video game news now as we are mere days away from the release of WWE 2K24, but the recent roster release left several fans feeling underwhelmed. Dozens of superstars, including top names like Drew McIntyre, were not mentioned during the recent reveal, which 2K have chalked up to a production error that will be rectified. One name not featured is CM Punk, and on social media, Punk admitted that he was late to the party as the game was well into production when he returned last November. Punk then brought up that in a DLC teaser, there was no sign of him and said that the fans have been going crazy and he planned on getting to the bottom of why he isn't in the game. Well, not long after Punk's video, someone clearly must have got the message at 2K, who announced its season pass and what fans can expect. The season pass will include notable names from the past and present, including DDP, The Dudley Boys, Carlito, Kyrie Sane, Pat McAfee, Jade Cargill, and yes, CM Punk. The Punk Pack, which features Punk, The Sandman, Terry Funk, and The Dudleys, will launch on May 15th, so while he won't be playable when 2K24 launches, fans won't have to wait long for the best in the world. When a botched muscle buster from Samoa Joe ended the in-ring career of Tyson Kidd, the former tag team champion became a WWE producer and has excelled in the backstage role. Kidd's role means he spends a lot of time working with writers to create compelling narratives across WWE's three shows each week, but this is no easy task. Speaking on Busted Open Radio, Kidd's wife Natalia said that producers and writers have it very tough as you never know when somebody is going to get sick or injured. Natalia said that it is also difficult for writers as there's a lot of massaging of egos as everybody wants to ultimately be booked to be the best. That doesn't seem to be the case for Natalia, who has become a versatility player for WWE's women's division, often being used to put younger and bigger stars over. Wrestling is an egocentric industry, so it's hardly a surprise that there's massaging of egos in WWE and other companies, but that won't stop Tyson Kidd and others from doing their best backstage. We've got news from The Rock now, as it's always a spectacle whenever he appears on WWE TV, and usually his appearances on the show are kept a surprise and often months apart. With The Great One now officially part of the bloodline though, this sporadic schedule is a thing of the past as WWE has announced his next three appearances, which are all coming soon. The Rock will be on this Friday's SmackDown from Glendale, Arizona, and will also be part of the March 8th show from the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. The Rumble Bull will also be around for the March 15th show in the FedEx Forum in Memphis, and we are sure the Cody Crybabies will let their voices be heard at the so-called People's Champion. One name who will likely be watching the Great One's appearance very closely is Seth Rollins, who has vowed to support Cody Rhodes in the pair's war with the Bloodline. The World Heavyweight Champion hasn't held back on The Rock, who he feels is trying to take a spot for more deserving stars, and now he's got some insults for the Great One's insults. Speaking with Submission Radio, Rollins claimed The Rock has been rattled by the negative response to his return and said that it's sad to see him go back to his same old insults. Rollins added that The Rock is a specimen, but one that hasn't wrestled competitively in 10 years and said he'd whoop the great one if a match does happen. In the most damning line, Rollins said that The Rock couldn't lay Seth's boots in his best days, let alone now, and dared The Rock to put his hands on him and find out what the champ is all about. The Rock has pitched a tag match for WrestleMania Night 1, pitting himself and Roman Reigns against Rollins and Rhodes, so it may not be long before Seth gets his chance at the Brahma Bull. But what do you make of these comments? Is Rollins right to say The Rock can't lace his boots? Share your thoughts in the comments. And we're ending with more from Monday Night Raw, as the excitement in San Jose didn't stop after the show went off the air. In a post-show segment, Cody Rhodes was seen interacting with a member of the WWE Universe who had a unique request that the American Nightmare was happy to fulfill. Taking a document from the fan, Rhodes revealed that this fan and their partner are expecting a child, and in the most wild gender reveal ever, the American Nightmare shared they're having a boy. Rhodes, as we all know, is a father, a topic that has come up multiple times in his career, and the American Nightmare was thrilled to share the good news after this week's Raw went off the air.